Good morning and thanks for coming out. Uh, yesterday, Secretary of the Air Force, Heather Wilson, unveiled the Air Force Science and Technology Strategy for 2030 and beyond. The Science and Technology Strategy, available online, prioritizes uh, d demanding time, space, and complexity in future conflicts across all domains. This strategy aligns with the National Security Strategy and the National Defense Strategy and lays out a path forward for the Air Force science and technology ecosystem to deliver warfighting capabilities at the speed of relevance and necessity. Before I summarize the key features of the strategy, I think it's important to remind you the process through which we developed this strategy. 18 months ago, in September of 2017, Secretary Wilson tasked the Air Force Research Laboratory, AFRL, to develop a strategy with framing questions. The questions broadly asked, what and how? What technology areas should we be investing in and how should we efficiently and effectively develop and prioritize those technologies? The first thing we did was look at past science and technology studies to understand what has changed in the past few decades. What became clear through that review and through the entire process that I will describe in a moment is that providing another technology list may not be the best approach, but rather compete to drive technology towards strategic capabilities for our warfighters' advantage. As a result, the strategy will frame our Air Force science and technology ecosystem that, that will frame that does not contain a list of technologies. The other framing question focused on how the methods, processes, organizational constructs that enable rapid and innovative technology development and scientific discovery. To answer those questions, we engaged universities, businesses large and small, other government laboratories, and our internal AFRL workforce to understand and capture best practices from science and technology ecosystems. Over the course of approximately eight months, we visited seven universities, six in the United States and one in the United Kingdom. We deliberately went to universities in geographically diverse areas that AFRL did not have a strong existing relationship already. Those universities include University of Nebraska, University of South Florida, Indiana University, the University of Washington, Texas A&M, the University of Utah, and the Imperial University of London to ensure we were aligned with our strongest allies. Beyond the university engagements, we met with a number of businesses, both large and small, primarily technology companies, to understand the methods and processes through which they use to make science and technology investments. We also visited other government laboratories to solicit peer organizations to identify best practices and processes we should adopt. We polled a wider audience online and enabled people who couldn't attend these events an opportunity to share their ideas through an online presence. Beyond the listening sessions and data collection, we invited experts from around the nation to sit on technology panels that we expected to be important for this review. These panels included artificial intelligence, machine learning, hypersonics, biotechnology, among many others. Out of these listening sessions, interviews, expert panels, and online presence, we collected over 1,500 ideas that address the what and the how. With all of that data collected and insights from direct interaction with the broad science and technology ecosystem, we began the review process to identify what we truly needed to focus on to shape the Air Force science and technology ecosystem and meet our mission in the coming decades. The winnowing process to identify the strategy objectives was done by an executive review panel co-led by Dr. Rich Joseph, the Air Force Chief Scientist, and Dr. Victoria Coleman. Out of that process, we identified three objectives in the strategy. I will briefly articulate those objectives, then I will open it up for questions. The first objective is to develop and deliver transformational strategic capabilities. As I said earlier, this is not a list of technologies, 
but rather capabilities that we believe are central to maintaining our warfighter edge in the future. We don't have a clear set of technologies or combination of technologies to create these capabilities. The point is that we will compete technologies to identify the most promising approach to deliver these capabilities. The five strategic capabilities are global persistent awareness, resilient information sharing, rapid effective decision making, complexity, unpredictability, and mass, and finally, speed and reach of disruption and lethality. The transformational component of our science and technology enterprise will be laser focused on technologies that will deliver these capabilities. To ensure that we have confidence in and understand how to employ these new technologies and capabilities, we have to demonstrate them in a relevant environment, build prototypes, and perform experimentation. This will build confidence in these new technologies for our warfighter. These transformational programs are the lead element for thinking and warfighting differently. As a result, we have called these Vanguard programs. A Webster's, uh, as Webster's defines Vanguard as the lead military element in an advancing formation. Likewise, these are the lead technology demonstrators for the new Air Force capabilities. It's critical that we are open and receptive to new ideas. To do that, we will broadly compete ideas across industry, academia, and government to enable new thinking and approaches to these difficult problems. Again, we do not yet know what technology or combinations of technology will emerge as the key difference makers for delivering these strategic capabilities. We will only know that through competing, assessing, and demonstrating. The second broad objective within the strategy is to reform the way science and technology is managed within the Air Force. To do that, the Secretary has directed that we stand up a Chief Technology Officer within the Air Force that will act as the single voice for programming and budgeting within the Air Force, advocating for resources, and prioritize the complex science and technology portfolio. While the details of this office are still in discussion, we believe that bringing a stronger voice for science and technology across the Air Force will help us achieve the objectives laid out in this strategy. The third objective is to deepen and expand the science and technology enterprise. There are two key components to this objective. The first is our internal workforce. We must ensure that we continue to attract, develop, and retain the best and brightest from across the United States and our allies. This will require extra effort to partner with universities and technology ecosystems to enhance and expand our bench of researchers. The second is to continue and expand our partnerships with other stakeholders in the science and technology ecosystem, which includes universities, industry, both large and small businesses, other defense laboratories, and other government laboratories, including the National Science Foundation and the Department of Energy Labs, to name just a couple. The reemergence of great power competition demands that our science and technology ecosystem expand to include not just the whole of the Defense Department or the whole of government. We seek to engage the whole of nation as the science and technology ecosystem to ensure we dominate time, space, and complexity in future conflict across all operating domains. We also recognize that we need to be easier to work with and connect with. To do this, we are implementing, implementing what we call a front door to better enable partnerships. AFResearchLab.com will act as our digital front door. Please keep this site in mind as we will use it to post more information as the strategy implementation continues. Finally, before I take questions, I'd like to take a moment and thank the uh, AFRL team who engaged uh, and made this strategy development uh, happen across the 18 months that it has taken us to get here from the time that it was called for by the secretary and she gave us the task to the finished product that you can now read. Uh, I'm very excited for the opportunity to uh, engage the AFRL workforce and make a difference for our nation going forward. Uh, but it was the, 
the, the tremendous work by the team that pulled this together, largely with an Air Force Research Laboratory uh, and with a number of other folks from, from outside that made this happen and allowed us to get here today.